Effortless golf, consistent golf, happy golf. Alex Forte here, Andy Gorman. You know, golf should feel easier. And a lot of people, they're trying to get more power, they're trying to get more, you know, trying to swing like the guys on TV, who by the way are uh, in pain most of the time, <laughs> Yeah. you know? Um, and it doesn't have to be, especially if, if you're a young golfer, you've got to listen to this. If you're in your 50s, you're only playing once a week, you've got to listen to this. Just, I can't emphasize this enough. You need to not resist against the right side or left side, whatever way you are. Because as soon as you do, the body's not designed that way, is it, Andy? It's absolutely not. And, um, you know, I was, I've been playing golf for, for nearly 40 years. And, uh, you know, the two books that you had to read back then was um, Modern Fundamentals of Five Lessons with Ben Hogan. And, uh, you know, kind of like that iconic book that we all love the drawings. Um, and, and Jack Nicholas, Golf My Way. And, you know, for me, those two books kind of painted a picture uh, of what I really needed to, to do for swinging a golf club. It's interesting that Jack Nicholas spent quite a lot of time watching Ben Hogan hit golf balls. Um, legend has it that Ben Hogan never once watched Jack Nicholas. Why would he? Um, <laughs> the greatest ball striker of all time had a body that was broken in a car accident. Remember that? And essentially, what some of the things that were written in the book. Um, some of the secrets that people have tried to pull and extract from the book over the recent years. Um, okay, sure, there's great stuff in there that's maybe not obvious, mm -hmm. but remember the obvious, which isn't always the case, because the illustrations don't tell us how much pain Hogan was in. Hogan was in immense pain. From 1949, he played golf. Whenever he played, he hit golf balls every single day, and he was in immense pain. He was in immense pain the moment he got up and immense pain when he went to bed, but not because of his golf swing. The certain things that Hogan did post the accidents, that's a 49 onwards, he did in his golf swing that I can observe were different to what he did in 46, 47, 48. But it was his body that dictated it. Exactly. That, that was it. Exactly. So people trying to replicate how he did it is because he was all skew with. So yeah. it was compensatory. One of the things that Hogan was very much able to do was make a big rotation. He, would, he had a big turn anyway, but he had more, seemed to have much more turn post-accident. And so to restrict that, he brought his back leg, back foot in. He turned it inwards so it was 90 degrees. It's talked about in the book. And subsequently from there, it allowed him to gain some kind of resistance in the hip. However, if you look at the videos around that time, the right leg, the trail leg, right, virtually locked out. However, it didn't restrict any of his ability to hit and connect with the golf ball. So what was it that he was doing? He was restricted. He could turn his foot out here and gain almost as much hip rotation as he could shoulder rotation. So he used the foot as an anchor on the ground as a resistance. That's not for everybody. So those of us that learn the game in the Hogan principle of the 90 degree right foot, and then the left foot turns out to so the 30 to 45 degrees, depending on the club, all of those factors there were based on what Hogan needed to do in order to swim the golf club. Not, not you. As Jack Nicholas did in his book, he named the book Golf My Way. This is how I do it. And, you know, does he suggest that that's what we're all supposed to be doing? I don't think for one moment he no. does. Yet with the Hogan principle of the trail leg perfectly square, it restricts hip, hip rotation. If you happen to have a massive hip rotation, that's a good thing. If you're very flexible, which most of you are, then it might work. So, so you know, one of the challenges that I got Alex to do was to get his foot to turn out. Yeah, because, my, my, I, because I used to, you know, I was very much like this, so then I'm pretty flexible, so I can still get my, you know, turn my hips around. I can still do that. I can still get into those positions, but there is a bit too much force there. But you also have a tendency to get a little bit of lateral shift as well, a little bit of movement away yeah. from the ball and away from the target. Yeah, trying to, in an so what comes to an upper body stretch. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, can how we not always this? good to do. Yeah, how we remedy this and how you can just Feel a lot more turn and just start, Let's just start with a square foot position there, Alex. 
Yeah, I just moved to the top of the swing. I remember seeing Harvey Peeney do this with Ben Crenshaw and Tom Kai, and he showed Ben, just turn your foot out now. All right, how much easier has the hip rotation and the completion yeah, of the There's shoulder? so much less stress. Like, there's no, there's no resistance. I can hold this all day long. Because no that foot's turned out. No, all right, you've moved it a little bit too much. That's fine, it's just for, for, for uh, visual. But you can clearly see that the freedom in the hips and the shoulders now allows him to be able to make the swing down and through and onto the finish. Doesn't really affect his finish whatsoever. So he's just literally turned his toes out and gained another 20 yeah. degrees of shoulder rotation. Yeah, it, I mean, effortless. exaggerating. Yeah, exaggerating. I'm just out of my way. That's, that's all it is. It just sort of feels like I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but I'm out of my way. So, and that's it. And just swing through it very, very easily and simply. So all you need to do is turn that foot out a little bit more. And that freedom in the back swing will come all to itself. Easy. All day long. Right, so give it a go. If you feel that your hip turn is a little bit restricted, you're struggling to get a full rotation in the upper body. It's going to give you more distance as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The further this swing travels, the faster it will generate club head speed at point of impact. Really important. Do it. You'll love it.